Just really try and focus on making good content, good stories. In the end, that will win out. And also do it, don't do it to become rich and famous, especially the young kids, this is my advice. Do it because you want to get better at making videos. That's what me and all my peers did. You didn't, we didn't know you could make money on videos when we started this thing, you know? How did Mark Rober get his start in video production? We are forcing him to tell us. Today, we're sitting down with Mark Rober to talk about the career that he's been able to create for himself. We're also talking to Mark about other topics as this season of Video Production Daily continues and other producers this week about their incredible careers within video and how they got to where they are now. Now, if you're creating a career in video production, Mark will be the first person to tell you that there's a whole lot of luck involved to achieve the kind of viral success that Mark has. But the truth is there's also so much that Mark has done right and his efforts have compounded over the years. And that's why we are exploring video production with Mark Rober. He's got a lot to offer this audience and I'm thrilled to be able to bring this interview with Mark to you right here on Video Production Daily. Now, Mark, you've had quite a prolific YouTube career. It's great to have you on the Video Production Daily Show. I'm making this sound very official, uh, <laughs> so, which is good. You know, let's. I'm just... starting to get nervous. Yeah. <laughs> what is? What did I sign up for? <laughs> but here we are. Uh, I'm sure most of you that are here know Mark, have seen his stuff. Um, you know, if I'm ever talking to someone about Mark and they're not sure if they know who he is, I'm like, you know, the glitter bomb video, <laughs> the glitter bomb guy, the watermelon video, <laughs> the Nerf gun video. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you've seen some of Mark's films. They demand the respect of being called films. So uh, that's what we'll call them. All right. Anyway, Mark, it's great to have you here on Video Production Daily. We try and keep it practical. We try and talk about tips. And it's exciting that throughout this season, we're really going to be talking with Mark about how he engages audiences on purpose. What are the things that he does to make engaging content? Well, we're kicking it off in week one with a far simpler question. And it's really just about how did you get your start, you know, making videos? And you took a non-traditional path I did, yeah. to make content. <laughs> so let's just jump into it, Mark. Like, how does someone go from engineering to creating massively successful YouTube videos? Man, it's like... Yeah, it was definitely nonlinear. Um, uh, I mean, I was I was working at NASA, and I'm a, so I'm a mechanical engineer. That's my background, and I I worked at NASA for nine years. Seven O's were on the Curiosity rover, and while I was there, this was like nine years ago. I had a Halloween costume where I had an iPad in the front, iPad in the back. If you do a FaceTime chat, it looks like you have a hole in your body, right? Because the camera in front shows what's in back. Anyways, I uploaded it to YouTube this new website called YouTube, you know, and uh, it, it seemed to resonate with people. It's like a million views in like a day and a half, front page of CNN. And I was like, this is a cool feeling. Like I have other ideas. I, I had no idea that was recorded on my phone, you know, really low resolution. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing from like a video film standpoint, still don't. I like working with people like you cause I'm like, oh, that's how the pros do it. I literally think, like you have this little thing that balances the audio underneath the camera. Like you can see the levels. I'm like, I need to get one of those, right? Every time I, I work with someone who actually knows what they're doing, I feel like I learn just something else. But yeah, very non-traditional. I still feel like an imposter in this industry, but uh, I don't know. I'll just do what I can do for the time being until people get sick of me. So making a video and putting it on YouTube is something a lot of people have done, but then there was a trajectory after that, right? So you made something and it sounds like immediately you got the reward, the dopamine reward yeah. of having some success, seeing yeah. and picking it up. And it's probably because the iPad in front, iPad in back, Halloween costume, it was novel enough that you got some of that attention. Um, but how did you progress that into a career? It sounds like you didn't jump off and start making YouTube videos right away. Yeah, for sure not. Um, it is funny too, like I will say, you're always chasing that same first high. I've never got, and now these videos, if I don't get a million views in like three hours, I'm like, I've fallen off, what's going on? And and you just, you never, it's never that same feeling of that original viral hit, I will say, just as a side note. You could take that off. <laughs> the uh, dopamine like, doesn't last. It's like sure. drugs. It's like heroin, really. <laughs> okay, here kids we go. At home. <laughs> no, so it's like, uh, yeah, I, I basically made a video a month since that time for nine years. And it was like, it was a very slow progression. You know, when I moved here and met you, that was like four years ago, about halfway through my YouTube career. I think I had like 150,000 subscribers. So that was after like four or five years. 
but then in the next four or five years now it's at like uh like almost 14 million subscribers so it's very like you know just chip away chip away and then it kind of really starts to take off so mark i'm wondering if you ever had kind of a shift in mindset where you went from doing this for fun to realizing that this was going to become your profession i mean it still feels like a hobby to me. So I, I moved up here and met you because I took a job at Apple here in the Bay Area. And it was only till like a year ago is when I finally quit my job full time to, to do the YouTube thing, just because the projects are so big at this point. Um, I mean, financially, I, I, I should have quit a long time ago. It, I think it makes I mean, candidly, you could make more if you're being big hits off YouTube with sponsors than even working at Apple. But I just, I really wanted to stay as an engineer and, and keep this as like a, a side thing because creativity is such a precious little flame. I didn't want to make it feel like I have to do this to pay the bills. I just wanted to keep it as like a fun side hustle as long as possible. And uh, so for me personally, whereas I know some people like they get 100,000 subs, they're like, I'm quitting the job. I'm doing this full time. But in some sense for me, like the opportunity cost was high. I really did enjoy what I did as an engineer. Um, so eventually I made the switch and it, it hasn't been as bad and scary as I thought it has been, you know, turning that hobby into like a full-time thing or, you know, it's like it, the benefit is I'm not working two jobs anymore, <laughs> which was rough. <laughs> so Mark, it's interesting because most of the people that I work with work at this from a different angle, right? We're not in entertainment per se. We're making content for clients or customers. And there's a, obviously the ecosystem around video is huge and there's a lot of ways to make money in this world. Um, but you bring a unique perspective to the show for sure. So let's just put you in the shoes of, you know, you're the mentor right yeah. now to people that are starting out. If they are interested in this uh, more entertainment focused element of building their own audiences, uh, what advice do you give to someone who's just starting out? Because it seems to me, in, in my mind, it's a harder road than, than having someone pay you for immediate services, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the equivalent of this question is basically like, hey, Mark, you won the lottery. Tell us how you picked those five lucky numbers. And I'm like, okay, go with your cousins. That's the trick. That's what I did, right? This is what it sort of feels akin to because it's like, Man, I recognize so much of what I do, and I know that's not what you want to hear on like an advice where you're trying to give practical advice, but the practical advice I would give is that content matters more than anything else. Like a lot of people get, oh, it's all about the thumbnail and it's all about how you hack the algorithm and you you have to have the right tags on the video. It's like forget about that. Just really try and focus on making good content, good stories. In the end, that will win out. And also do it don't do it to become rich and famous, especially the young kids, this is my advice. Do it because you want to get better at making videos. That's what me and all my peers did. You didn't, we didn't know you could make money on videos when we started this thing, you know? We did it for our passion, our love. We wanted to get better at a thing. And just the more you make, the better you'll get. So it's like, if that's your goal and that's your criteria for success, you'll, you, have, you have a much higher chance of feeling good about the endeavor and learning and just becoming a better person in the process versus like, unless I make X amount of money and I have X amount of followers, I'm not successful. Then it's like, that's hard to, to beat that bar, you know? I think the easiest thing to say is that Mark Rober has taken a non-traditional path to get where he's at. We will leave it at that. I am excited though, because I feel like there's a lot of practicality to the way that Mark really does approach what he does. And that's why we're exploring a lot of topics in depth, not doing this all in one episode, but going week to week. Mark, I'm excited to have you back next week. We're gonna sit here and knock that episode out and I'm excited to bring it to you. But I wanna thank everybody for joining us on another episode of Video Production Daily. I'll dance you out of all these, Luke. <laughs>